Welcome to another episode of Winter's Glow, Season 2, Episode 3. In the last episode, I was working on the sweaters, filling in the first colours, adding a bit of shadow and some highlights on the outer folds of the fabric. In this episode, I'm going to start with a base colour on the jacket that is tied around Jay's waist. I'm going to be filling that in with purple as a base colour. Then I will be moving on to begin the sketch of the background scenery. As I carefully fill in this colour, I do leave some tiny, barely noticeable little lines um, so that I can see where the folds are in the jacket. Leaving the lines is simply painting around, you know, where the pencil lines are and just leaving a tiny slither of white where I can see uh, a slight difference or even just a, just a tiny little piece that kind of gives me a bit of direction for when I'm filling in the details later. This portion of the video has been sped up. You can still see the demonstration, it's just going a little faster. As I finish up this base colour on the jacket, I'm going to be leaving this to dry and using a pencil to start sketching the background at the top of the painting. When I'm drawing on a piece of paper on a table, I generally press a little bit with a little bit of pressure. Um, but when I am doing a sketch for sort of roughly estimating where things are going to be in a background, I hold my pencil a little differently intentionally and I keep it all very light where I can easily erase something if I needed to or I could just sort of feel out where things are. So I kind of hold the pencil like, like you see in the picture and sometimes I'll hold it sideways and I'll just put in that very faint light sketch of where I see things. So I'm looking at the photograph right now, referring to it and sort of placing trees roughly where they are. And sometimes you have to make mistakes in order to see the correct way to do something on a painting. And so this kind of allows me that flexibility of penciling it in, sort of if I get it in the wrong place slightly, then I can adjust it um, just by using a very faint stroke with the pencil. The thing about creating a painting over months is it gives you a period of time where the painting can sit and dry thoroughly so that you can do sketching like this. The lines are very faint and that's the idea because it gives me the opportunity to um, correct them if I need to and you'll, you'll kind of see them a little bit more as we go along. You can see a little bit more now of the sketch coming through and uh, it is very faint because I want the opportunity to erase what needs erasing if it isn't accurate. Um, I want to get this right, I want it to look beautiful and um, I want the people in this picture to feel very special and know that a lot of time and effort and care has gone into this painting. I'm almost done with the very faint sketch and I had thought of ending this episode here but that makes the episode quite short so I thought I would just transition with this beautiful painting into the segment where I try using a palette knife um, to do some of the lines on the trees. I'm applying a little bit of paint 
that I have put on the side edge of a palette knife and just gently placing it onto some of those lines that I sketched in previously. I absolutely love using a palette knife and um, it's just something that uh, I had tried with a friend once and um, it just inspired me and the way uh, it was described to me was uh, it's kind of like you know when you're icing a cake or something using a palette knife and it just always fascinated me so whenever I'm doing a painting I will look for places where I can use my palette knife um, sometimes it's um, just not going to work for that um, scene. So um, here I have tried the palette knife and I see that it's, it's kind of making the uh, branch a little thicker than I would like. So I'm using a little damp cloth and gently wiping away some of the thickness of that. Uh, but leaving some on there um, and I'm going to work with that with a paintbrush a little bit later. I do like the way the wipe allows me to remove some of the paint. Um, the background is has got to be thoroughly dry for this to work, um, otherwise I'll be wiping off the uh, paint from the background too. So I have to be quite quick once I apply the paint. I need to be quite quick about removing whatever I need to remove um, without um, pressing on the background too much, just in case it dampens that. and. Um, take some of that paint away as well. So I'm back to the small paintbrush, it's probably a size 3 round and I'm using it very carefully just applying the paint with the tip of the brush to try to get those really fine lines. I uh, guess it's uh, the painting isn't at this point conducive to using the palette knife I really do like to use the palette knife, um, but I guess I will have to look at finding a way to use it in the painting later on. I'm thinking maybe for some of the leaves on the trees or something, but we'll see how it goes. At this point in the painting I'm realizing that I'm having to reach over the couple a lot to get to the top area and what I'd like to do is lay the canvas down and change the position of it and I'm going to do a little technique that I call the John Roberts technique. Uh, this was an artist I had met many years ago uh, when I first started out and he had shared with me basically a way to do a sky um, where you turn your painting upside down and you um, can reach it better and access it without sort of getting a mess on the rest of the painting. The technique was applied to what we were doing at the time which was plain air painting um, and we would go sit in a field and paint a barn that we called, like we called the whole area with the barn, the vanishing landscapes. And um, those were memorable times and I will never forget the influence um, and the inspiration of John Roberts. With access to the top of the painting a little easier now, I'm going to continue filling in these lines for the branches and the trunks of the trees. I'm just using the palette knife to mix the paint and I love how it's easy to clean off the palette knife by just wiping it with some paper towel and you're good to go. I thought I would try the paintbrush and also this little, I think it's a little makeup brush of some kind. Each painting is an opportunity to explore different tools and materials that could give different effects with the paint. So I like to every now and then just try something um, and see, see how it works on the canvas. 
I'm just going to try this little makeup brush. Could be a hit or a miss. See if I can get a consistent line with it. It does a fairly decent job of applying the paint, however it doesn't allow me the flexibility that a brush does of sort of pressing a little harder with the brush and getting a wider line and lifting up and getting a finer line. So I'm going to continue with my brush. I've decided that that tool will probably be a good tool for sort of dabbing the paint somewhere for a little bit of texture, maybe later on. Before covering the top of the canvas with wet paint, I'm just reaching down beside the couple to apply a few branches that are beside them in the snow there. At this point I've decided to add some green and red to the palette and I'm going to mix this up and create a color for the shrubbery in the background. So it's just sort of a distant uh, foliage and it's got snow on it so I've decided to use a sponge to apply it so that there are gaps in the color allowing the light background to shine through, which will give the appearance of snow. I have found a fairly aerated sponge so that it is not super compressed and it has quite nice spacing in the holes that are in it so that I can get the texture I'm hoping for. I'm applying this carefully to the areas where I can see some shrubbery in the background and I'm going to use the sponge in a couple of ways. One is the dabbing and dabbing more in areas where it's a little more dense in the darker color and the less where I want more snow to be to have the appearance of snow. The sponge will also be scraped on the canvas uh, in some areas giving the effect of like I don't know, like 60 or so little tiny brushes creating these little tiny hairs that could be uh, grasses or just sticks that are sticking up in and around the shrubbery. I'm also scraping the sponge in areas where there are very distant tiny trees that have lots of tiny little branches um, coming off of them just to see if using this technique will give me the look that I'm hoping for. In some cases I'll end up wiping this off but leaving just a little hint of it and sometimes that's enough. So here I am using uh, my little damp cloth again and what I've done is I've let the little strokes dry a tiny bit and now I'm gently wiping some of it off but so faintly and you can still see the gentle scrapes on the canvas and those are the tiny distant lines I was hoping for. Now in this area I have decided there is a bit too much of the, uh, the sponge dabbing and the scraping so I'm just cleaning some of it off and also moving the paint around very very delicately to get the effect I'm hoping for. I'm still leaving some of that there in the background though because I'd like to see that in the distance. I'm also working to clear away a path um, of a tree that will be more in the forefront so I need to make sure that where I've put the shrubbery there that I can uh, not have too much texture on that tree 
Sometimes the uh, sponge dabbing creates uh, bumps in the paint, which um, I need to sort of blend down a little bit to get a different texture for a different area. Now I'm just applying a little bit more of the, the dabbing where I'd like it to be. Back to the paintbrush. I believe it's a size 3 round brush. I'm going to be applying more of the tree trunks. This portion of the video has been sped up. You can still see the demonstration, it's just going a little faster. Even though this portion of the video is going at double pace, um, you can see it at a reasonable pace because I am moving very slowly and carefully to produce these lines and trying not to press too hard on the brush. Increasing the speed of some of the segments in this video has allowed me to share more of this process with you. This also allows for more content to be added to each video moving forward. Beginning steps and techniques will still be shown in real time. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and that you're enjoying the second season of Winter's Glow. If you're just visiting and you haven't seen the first season of Winter's Glow, you can go to the playlist Winter's Glow on Art with Janine Liza YouTube and find it there. I want to thank you again for visiting and to my subscribers, thank you so much for helping my channel grow. If you'd like to find more videos like this one, please go to Art with Janine Liza YouTube and subscribe.